ci do fare più cura? Sì, ci fare più cura. Hello everybody, uh, we're just going to do a live painting, um, so today we're just going to do like a little seascape, but this time I'm going to do it in oils, um, let me show you the picture here, this picture we took, well I took next uh, near our home, and uh, so we're going to try and attempt to see if I could do it all in one shot a la prima, and let's see what we get out of it. So let me introduce the colors that I have so far. I have um, Cad Yellow, Alizarin Crimson, Cerulean Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Green, and Titanium White. Um, I'm using the Lucas Oils here. Eh, not working. Ah, oh, you caught me right on time, Cheryl. You sure did. So, uh, hmm, let's start. And if you have any questions, I'll uh, do my best to answer them for you. So I'm just going to start with, uh, let's just start with just like a little sketch really quick. I have a little bit of medium here, which is Gamsol mixed with the linseed oil. So we have a little tree here. Let's first figure out our horizon. The horizon's gonna be like around right here. Uh, it's gonna be a tree right here. Actually the horizon would move it up a little bit more. Then it's gonna be the beach. Let's see. Nothing there. There's a little tree here on the side. And there's another bunch of tree right here. Okay. Uh, I'm painting with oils. So. Really, that's all I need as far as uh, drawing goes, just as long as I know about where my perspectives are. So for the tree, uh, let's see, we're going to do a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue. A little bit of cad yellow, not too much of it, burnt umber. Put a little bit of medium, get that flowing. Now remember what I say to you in all my videos, uh, we don't care about details. Forget details for the beginning. Now this Gansol is going to help with uh, the drying time. of the paint you know what let me throw some yellow ochre down here too as well I just grabbed what I had next to me so uh, what the yellow ochre is going to do is dull down this green a bit because yellow ochre has some red in it. I'm using a number, what is this, a number two uh, bright. And I'm putting this on like really thin. All right. 
right. Now there's a lighter tree. So I'm just going for the general big shapes here. Right here. Now we're going to work on this tree and then going back towards the back a little bit. So, let's see. Now this tree is a lot lighter. Goes into the sand. There's a house back here somewhere. I don't know if I'm going to put that in or not. Not 100% sure. Now I'm going to dull these colors down by just adding white because we have another set of trees back here. I hope everybody's weekend is starting off good. Now I don't have to put everything I see in this painting. You could just tailor the painting to however you want it to be. Go for a round brush now. Just going to work a little bit of detail here. Well, not so much detail, but um, um, more like some other pieces of work that here. It's okay if they mix together. It's not a problem. Okay, let's work on the sand. All right, the sand has the shadow. That's particularly why I wanted this painting. Now, this sand's got the little shadow that's, you know, I don't know how it looks like on your screen, but it's gonna be a little bit of a purplish color, and then we're gonna hit that highlight over here with probably some yellow ochre in the beginning, and then maybe with, with the stronger highlights, we'll do a lot of white with a little bit of yellow. Okay, so, you know, actually, let me work on this tree up here. Let's work on that. Uh, let's make it a dark color. Uh, forgot about that tree. Got some sea, sea grapes up there. Make it dark enough. Mix the colors up a little bit, you know, just change it up a little bit. There you go, just a little bit of darks. like nothing for now but I promise you we will have well I can't even promise that but we'll have a decent pain okay all right now for the sand so let's make this little bit of purple here let's make a 
I find out Lizard and Crimson and Ultramarine Blue, they make a really nice purple together. Like that. I, <coughs> excuse me. A little bit of burnt sienna. What that does is just like graze it down a little bit. Now, I don't want to go too light on the value. I'd rather keep it dark because I could always change it, make it lighter afterwards. Okay, I could always change the value. Now, why do I add that? The burnt sienna is just to gray down this purple and the blue a little bit as it was coming towards the back um, just to tone down the color now notice I did not go just well I kind of did here but um, you don't want to you want to kind of follow the landscape okay so the the shadow is going to go this way but this if there was shadow in the water, because the water's flat like this, then I would have changed the trajectory of the um, of the line. So basically, I would have done this this number like this, and then like that, just to show um, the landscape a bit. Yeah, it's raining. It's thundering outside. Mommy called. All right, so now, I'm just putting like a warm color here for now. That's just the light shining through on this side. And I don't want to make this my brightest, more of my brightest colors are going to go towards the back over here, if anything. Yes, I do paint with acrylics more than I do with oils, but lately I've been wanting to rekindle. Um, I wanted to rekindle a little bit with my oils. Uh, it's been such a long time. So that's the premises of me doing this uh, in oils. Plus I've had requests to do oils, you know. if Some people have asked, do you do like, you know, other mediums? Say yeah. I do. This I don't do it often in front of you guys, but I'm doing my best to um, cater to everyone. Now everything is smooth. As you can see, it's like pretty blurry, but you'll see eventually. I will start putting thicker colors and thicker strokes. Right now it's just like the ugly stage, just like in any paintings, you know, it's, it's the ugly stage, it's like, you know, you're trying to find where everything's going to go and that's just it, you know. Alright, and you know, like I said, you don't have to paint everything that's in the picture. Alright. All right, so now let's start putting a little bit of sky. Well, actually, you know what? Let's do the water. Um, see if that works. Yeah, it's about right. Maybe a little bit more ochre. Should we try? Let's do it. Moi, je pense qu'il est timide. Parce que moi, si je tourne la tête comme ça, si quelqu'un dit quelque chose, on me fait un, un bonjour, c'est parce que je suis mal à l'aise, je suis timide. Ouais. Parce que c'est un Américain, c'est pas un Saoudien. Et j'ai dit que tu... Oui, tu... mais c'est live. Oh, mais tu vas compter, non Je t'ai dit c'est live. Mais tu peux, ça fait un... Je fais attention à ce que tu dis. Sorry. Attends, Yes, they both do have their pros and cons as far as, you know, what they can achieve. Like, I could probably, if if I was, like, basically on a deadline, I probably could knock out this painting really fast. 
I could knock out this painting a little bit fast, uh, faster than I would with oil, and I could go over and do glazes um, on top of these paints. Unlike with oils, I couldn't do that. So I have to be a little bit more calculating in what I do. So, all right, so now let me see. Let's go for the sky definitely now. Uh, let's go for ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of cerulean, a little bit of burnt sienna. And the reason for the sienna is just to tone down the, the color of the sky a bit. So let's see. Now remember, this is a very impressionistic painting. Okay, we're not here too concerned about detail, just like, you know, paint your heart away, basically. Yeah, a lot of these Florida scenes are like really, really nice. It's really enjoyable to paint. So now I just dipped in my cerulean blue. So I'm just painting around all my big shapes. Try to cover as much ground as possible. If you're wondering what kind of brushes I'm using, I'm using the Princeton Poly Tips. You can find them at Jerry's Artorama. They're really, 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 really nice to paint with. Now you see me sometimes dipping in the medium because I find that if the paint is sticking enough, moving enough, uh, I just dip in there and of course things come to life. I may put like a little house, that, that house that's over here somewhere maybe, we'll see, I'm not too sure yet. Uh, so just remember, just stay loose and I'm leaving this blank over here because um, let's put a little bit of cloud. Let me see what brush. Let's use this small flat. Let's do maybe just a hint of yellow and a white. If some colors get mixed into it, that's fine. That's the beauty of oil sometimes. It's just, you know, you could pull off some uh, some mixes, you know, some nice blending effects that you just cannot do with acrylics. That's what I like about it. Now, there's been times when I finished and uh, started a painting on Ala Prima and you know, the next day I would adjust a few things, you know, that I thought would help the painting a little bit more so just because I do a la prima does not mean uh, I don't go back and readjust the painting a bit I do 
So, not every time, but sometimes I do. Okay. So we'll let that dry a little bit. Uh, let's see. Let's do this little house here. You don't see it very much, but a little bit of shadows of it. And notice I'm still using a big brush to do the work, okay? And after that, once this dries a little bit, we could start doing sky holes. Actually, we could actually start working on this piece here. It's not dry completely, but it will tack up enough for me to uh, add non paint to this. So let's go. All right. Um, Ultramarine blue, and let's see some yellow ochre. Yeah, it's very loose painting. You know, what kind of canvas am I using? I'm using an 8x10 stretch canvas. Whoops. I always prefer the loose approach due to the fact that, you know, you're not beholden to um, to details and you, I, I believe, in my opinion, the paintings just look a little bit more lively, if you will. That's my, my take on it. So I'm adding all these colors here, really not paying too much attention to, as long as it stays a little bit dark, and I'm going to probably be adding a little bit of white to this, because this tree is not uh, too important back here, okay, and we're going to break up that mask because there's another tree in front of it, right this right here and if i do this too light then this will not pop out so you got to keep that in consideration that if you're going to have lighter colors in front of it you might want to keep the back colors or colors surrounding the the object or subject lighter and then we're going to add some darker areas in these trees as well and you'll see what i what i mean by that So I'm going to add some pockets of dark colors. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Thank you all for the compliments, by the way. So this is another good teaching tool here. Let's say there's some... Uh, notice how I, I got like a mid-tone color, right? So watch this. Watch what's going to happen next. Now, I could go in here and add some darker tones, you see? If I find something is not dark enough, I could always go back into it. And you, some people may ask, well, why didn't you do that before? Well, I, I don't know exactly where all the dark's going to be, and sometimes, you know, this I find it's too dark. What I find is like by putting a middle tone, it works best for me. Sometimes, not all the time, because it uh, it lets the colors blend together a bit. You see what I mean? So that's what I do. I just start with mid tone colors, and then sometimes I'll go in and add darker darker tones
let's change this uh, oops too green let's give this some a little bit of sunshine here and just flick 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 just flicking off right now what I'm doing what you're seeing me do is just give more visual texture to the tree just like that you know I'm just using the side the fat the, the flat side of the brush this long side and just going you know just like that just to show and represent that you know um, branches and and leaves are going a certain way there you go just like that and you know what I'm gonna actually break up that mass a little bit I'm gonna break up that mass I'm gonna use a little small round brush let's let's do something about this mass Use some of that color in here. Tone down this blue. So let's let's do this. Uh, let's something like that, and maybe a branch here. Let's do some like right back here a little bit. There. Gonna leave that alone a little bit. I'm gonna switch now brushes. I'm gonna go to um, a hog hair brush. This one's a little bit softer, and this particular brush holds a lot of paint. It's a uh, Mimic Hog. Get those at Jerry's Autorama also. It's a number one um, round. And let's make some nice green bushes here. A little bit of medium. A lot of yellow. All right. Because the sun's coming from the back, this was more of an afternoon uh, view that we had. Maybe even lighter. Let's see. See how see this brush loads up a pretty good amount of paint. I hope you can see that. Let's add a little more blue in the shadows, like a really again not too that's in the show. And then these bushes are here too. Is... These were more like grasses. So I'm just going to go up and down, up and down on that.
All right, let's start working a little bit on the shadows, okay? Um, all right, let me show you this part where I do the highlights and you'll see what I was talking about. Actually, there was a shadow here as well, I forgot to add. There was one like right here to this tree here. If you do it light enough, you can achieve the shadow. Maybe a little bit more on the bluish side. Okay. Now, let's do some of the highlights just to demonstrate that part. Okay, before we go diving too deep into the video. Do I ever do really large paintings? Yes, I do. I do do large paintings. Um, I have some actually next to me, but I, I can't put them over here. So um, I have a website where you can view some of my larger paintings. And it's in the description. Uh, on most of my videos so all right now I loaded up a lot of paint okay and I'm gonna lightly go over what I just did here watch the difference okay it's, it's showing like really light on on my side of things here I don't know how well it shows on your end but it really makes like a really nice uh, nice contrast and remember I'm angling it off as well okay Now, I'm going to start working on some of the shadows here. It's more of a cerulean blue. Let me see a little bit of burnt sienna. Ah, no good. Hold on. Uh, I have a dirty mix here. Maybe a little bit of... Because further away from the main subject, uh, uh, the shadow is a little bit more cooler from what my perspective is. So now I just go over like really lightly. Don't put too much pressure. Okay. Don't put too much pressure on this. And it's actually uh, a little bit of mix here as well. The sand. Leveling off this way. There you go. Lighter this way. And then it's going to be a little bit darker. coming down this way there you go Let me add this highlight over here as well. Let me grab a brush. Uh, this warm highlight. Like showing, you know, 
like coming from between the trees Ooh, I like that you know what let me make a little bit more actually a little bit add a little bit of red you see we're not perfect you and I mess up I just want to make it like a more of an orangey red highlight here because it was more in the afternoon so you want to depict that to the shot some of the highlights will be a little bit on the warmer there you go basically adding some pinks to this There you go. I'm glad you guys are learning something from this. You know, you're taking something away. Um, it is helpful sometimes when you just look at other people paint, you know, and see what they're doing. You know, a lot of times that's how I learned um, from others as well. So, look, I'm just paying it forward here. Trying to help you guys you know maybe you guys eventually could start selling some paintings help you out with this and this crazy time that we're going through where you know markets are going haywire and at some point you can only depend on yourself here there you go i like that better Okay, so it's starting to look like something, right? So let me work on this house here. Let's show that showing through here this way. Show a little bit of house through the trees, huh? There you go. Like that. Uh, yeah, you could somewhat get the same effect. The only acrylics that I think you would have, get this kind of effect with um, would be the Golden Open. They feel like oils. And uh, you probably could get close enough to the same effects with that. So sometimes I do paint with my uh, with my goldens. Uh, there was something I was going to do. What was I doing? Oh. Sorry, it's hard to just paint and do the conversation oh, that's no 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 that doesn't work that doesn't work more yellow maybe this a little bit of ochre let's see yeah that's a little bit better basically what I'm doing is um, indicating some sunshine because remember I said the sun's coming from here so I'm just putting some highlights it's okay if it blends let's put, let's put some sky holes here somewhere
Actually, the horizon, we're just going to do a little bit darker blue. I think it's just a little bit too light. Now you notice this uh, darker blue that I just put in here, this darker mixture is bringing out the colors just a little bit more in the highlights. That works better. We add a little bit more visual interest here. Uh, just adding some darks. Just remember, don't apply too much pressure. Now there's some rocks back here. Let's put those in. And we're gonna put some highlights to those in a minute. to be exact. Uh, let's work on the water. I'm trying to keep this painting under an hour. 44 minutes, sorry. Let me see. Add some highlights in the water here. Really lightly. I'm letting some parts mix. And again, I'm going like really light touches. I'm adding a little bit of yellow for the shallow water area. There you go. Now this is the North Palm Beach uh, Park where my family and I would go a lot of the times to enjoy an evening. Give it a dark horizon. There you go. Let's give these rocks a little bit of um, highlights. Remember, the sun's coming from here.
no, nothing too special. Um, start working on these trees here, on the sea grapes. On this part, we're going to put the highlighted uh, um, tree, and uh, let's see what else we can do. So, the sea grapes. Let's start working on that. Just make big fat circles, use thick paint, a little bit of yellow ochre to indicate, you know, some of the highlights. And we're going to go with brighter highlights than this afterwards. if they're mixing all right There you go. Let's use a liner. So this is the picture. Okay. So I'm just going to work these little sea grapes here. Use some of this mix. Maybe a little bit more brown into it. Put the medium just so it can flow a little bit easier. Let's put some grapes on there. Let's put some sky holes in here as well. Make 
think I'm going to darken this up a little bit more here. All right, let's do this tree over here that we were talking about earlier. Let's find some. More on the yellow side. to put every leaf in there just indications indications that's all I'm doing very light touches. I'm not doing, I'm not pressing too hard. Well, I don't get it. I don't get the foliage right all the time. I'll tell you that. I'm not that good at it. I have my limits. There's people that could get this right, like, like it's nothing. I've seen some out there, like you know, some people are very, very impressive as how they could just get the colors like spot on. I, I guess it just takes like a lot of years, you know, just like anything else. Um, but sometimes it's envious of how they just do it. And it's like effortless. Do some branches. Again, light touches. Let's do another branch coming out this way. Give it some visual interest, although it's not in the picture. It's okay. Do whatever you want. There you go. That works. One thing I did forget to add <clears throat> was there's some seaweed. I might. There's some seaweed here. I'm going to try to add some of those in. See what happens. Rectangle area, what are we talking about? I'm kind of confused. I believe Nick, you were asking that question. Let's put some, make it a little bit more orangey. Now I'm starting to color dark a little bit. There you go, just like that. Uh, 
like this too. Light, light touches. And when you see me add blue to this brown here, to this uh, mix, it's just because the blue helps darken the color a little bit more. And to indicate the leveling off, watch. Go up like this. Now we're going to play some highlight on some of them. So let's just do some yellow and sienna. Play some highlights where the light is hitting the seaweed. Even the ones that are in shadow, some of them are getting some kind of highlight, you know, spots of sun. There you go, just like that. Let's have a s'moresborgs of color. Anyway, we don't have to get too technical about it. Actually, let me let me. Um, I want to add a streak of highlight of grass. Let me use this brush. There's grass up here on this little. For me, there you go. let me put even a brighter highlight, almost like pure yellow. A little bit of cerulean. A little bit of highlight on this tree as well because why not? Let me see. I think that's pretty much it. You know what? Actually, no. Let's do a little bit of highlight in the water as well. Just like that. And there you have it. What do you guys think? I kept it just under an hour. Quick, fast, loose. Center retention looks like the island is near. 
while I did bring the photo, the, the original picture, you know, this is a little bit further away, but the whole interest was to bring this closer. So yeah, I did make it a little bit bigger than uh, what you see. Um, it all depends like what you want as far as uh, how big or how small or because the original picture, let me see if I can find it. This was the original, but I brought it in closer. Okay, I cropped it closer so that I can, because uh, I just wanted this whole thing here, all right? So, I mean, for right now, I'm pretty much done, but once this tack up, which mean by tomorrow, I should be able to add other layers and uh, if anything is missing, I'll just go in there and fix it, you know, so. Uh, I hope you guys learned something from this. Uh, and if you have any questions, you know, first of all, I want to say thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And if you have any questions about the material or the techniques that I use in this painting or what have you, feel free to ask and I'll answer them as soon as possible. And uh, please, it helps when you hit the like button, your subscribe and notification. So that when I start the next painting, which I know I don't always tell you when I'm going to do it, but you will be notified when I start doing live paintings if you hit the subscribe and the notification button at the same time. So it helps me and it helps us get together at the same time. So let's just bring this picture up a little bit closer. That's it folks really appreciate taking the time and with that i'll tell you guys good night and thank you very much have a great day